Hello chess fans, today I'm going to teach you a universal setup against the ready and the English attack. So the ready uh, move order would go with knight f3 and here we play this move d6. And you have to have a weapon against d4 whether that be the king's indian or anything else. Here you can also go for the dutch, you can go for these modern bishop g4 setups. There's a lot of different sort of things that you can go for here. But that's not the topic of today's video. Today's video is if they go g3 and go for the c4. And this is going to be basically the caveat position of today. And this is another move order that can happen. If they play c4, you go e5, g3, d6. No matter what they do here, after g3, you're going to go d6. Go for f5, knight f6. And again, we're in our caveat position against the English and the ready. So now we're going to look at it, analyze the game between Valero Pawns, a 2700 GM, and a 2000 to see how he basically dismantles us amateur players. So this is the move order that was chosen. It was from the Dutch, and we saw our same position after knight c3. So now here, maybe the best move is to go for a5. And if you ever play this in your own games against a higher rated player, I recommend a5 because of the fact that after rook b1, queen e8, we will transpose to the game. But we just basically don't allow after queen e8, they have this option of going b4 right away without any preparation, which maybe is the best line. Apparently, black is doing huge here in the database, which I don't really understand because the white engine gives white a huge advantage. And to me, it looks to make a lot more sense. In the other lines, white has to waste some moves, rook b1 or a3 to prepare b4, but here they don't. So instead of that, Valero Pounds went for queen e8. And after rook b1, he went for a5. So again, same position, it's just that they had the extra option of rook b1. And the idea of queen e8 is to go for queen h5, f4, and bishop h3. And this is sort of going to be the idea of the attacking setup. We're going to see it play out, and honestly, he needed a lot of brilliant moves. So if, if you're not really interested in a, being an attacking player, I would not recommend this setup. But you can also play it simply. For example, instead of queen e8 and a5, you can go for a5, and after rook b1, you can go for this move knight a6 and try to play this positionally this is also another way you can try to look for things you're going to go for c6 knight c7 look for d5 eventually but queen e8 is a lot more swashbuckling way to play so here after a5 we transpose now we see queen h5 the idea we're getting ready for f4 and here his opponent played a mistake here maybe the most obvious move is to go b4 and after takes takes the reason why this is better than just allowing them go b4 right away is because at least now we have an open a5 for our rook so Obviously, that can't be a bad thing for black, and that's why we would like to play like this. So they probably should have gone for b4, but instead they went for this knight d2 move, which is a move I see all too often, and the move pretty much does nothing. You just remove the knight from defending the h2 pawn, which is a very crucial defender for the white pieces, and we're going to see how black takes advantage of that with immediately playing the move f4. Now, white could have possibly been wanting to play f4 themselves, but we have to activate this bishop somehow. So here went for knight d5, takes, takes, king h8, and we saw e3. And here, the idea of e3 is, okay, they want to get rid of this strong, stable pawn on f4, and we're also threatening the queen trade. So obviously, we don't want to go back, and we don't want to trade queen. So we have to go bishop g4. Now, bishop g4 is a little bit dangerous, because we are hanging the bishop, uh, the pawn on b7. But what if white went f3? White ended up not going for f3 in the game. And take a few seconds that you can see why he didn't do that so here my first thought when seeing this position is okay f takes g3 we're threatening mate if they take our bishop it's mate but after h takes g3 and queen h uh, bishop h3 i think white actually is not doing too badly here after a move like rook f2 we're threatening here and there's really no sort of attack so instead you have to play bishop h3 immediately attacking the rook now if they go for the same line we can take here attacking the rook and that would be completely winning. This position is minus 8. Notice that if they move the rook or something, we take the knight. So they have to go for this move g4. Trapping the bishop pretty much. And after queen h4, I was wondering about something, a move like bishop takes b7. But here, apparently after rook a7, bishop b5, and something like f takes e4, material is that white is pretty much a pawn up. They have an exchange for a, we have a bishop and a pawn. But black just has way too much activity in this position and sort of the cookie is going to crumble soon for the white pieces. So that's why pretty much that's unplayable. Now, instead of that, his opponent went for bishop f3, which is a natural move, but it completely misses the idea of f takes g3. A very nice move. If takes here, we can again mate them. I've already, uh, We've already seen that tactic. And here after f takes g3, 
take a few seconds to see if you can find the move. There's only really one move for a huge advantage here. There's technically two moves, but one move give what gives black a very large advantage. And the move is Rook takes F3, played very swiftly by the super GM, and it's a brilliant move. Now notice if they play a move like knight takes f3, I think simple enough is knight d7, rook f8, and then we're slowly just going to win. For for example, if they go king h2, for example, if here, here, and king d2, we have the move queen h3, and after king g1, a move like e4 in here would win the full piece. So he took with the rook, you kind of have to take with the rook. Now we don't want to exchange pieces, so here we go knight d7, looking to get the knight in the game, looking for e5 and here again to win a piece. And so you have to get out of the pin with queen f1. And here the GM had to see all the way to here. Because if you just take this piece right here, after a queen takes, do we even have an advantage? Yes, black is slightly better because they're up on development, but not by much. So instead he went knight c5, a brilliant move here. Now if you try to save your rook with some a move like rook, H, rook f2, we have the move bishop h3, and after queen e2, something like this, this, bishop, this uh, rook is actually getting trapped. So we think about it, how can we possibly save the rook? To save the rook, we have to move this knight out of the way because, okay, where does the rook move? So let's say we go knight b3, we go for a4, attacking the knight. Where does the knight go? It has to go to a1 or it has to go back. We don't want to go back because then we're going to get rook f1 and mated. For example, if knight d2, rook, f1, rook f8, and we're getting mated here. They literally do not have a move to play here. They're an absolute zigzagging. So instead of that, knight a1, rook f8, threatening mate here. And after bishop d2, bishop g4, we're winning the rook back and we're going to be up a pawn. So basically he had to see the fact that they're pretty much paralyzed if they try to save the piece here. And maybe that was a better chance for him. But instead of that, also they have to move uh, rook f7, but I think simplest enough is bishop e2. And there's no way to defend this. And again, everything is going to be paralyzed. For example, just a sample line, queen f2. And after here... We play king g8 to cover f7 after here, g6, the rook is actually trapped. For example, if here, we, have, we just take it and we can't go anywhere else. So, yeah, basically, the super GM had to see all that. And after d4 here, that's why you couldn't have saved the piece. We're also threatening with knight c5 to go takes, takes, and then takes here. And we're going to be up a pawn. So d4, we go knight e4, threatening if takes here. We can go bishop takes f3, knight d2, and after this, it's just game over. With this coming here, this coming here, there's just no way to defend. Rook f7, and here the GM actually made a huge blunder. It's very unfortunate because the hardest move to find is with the knight back. And that's the, your hint for with this tactic. But honestly, I will say it's not a very difficult tactic. I'm honestly shocked that the G super GM missed it because... Uh, for me personally, the first thing I thought about was this. The idea is to go with bishop e2 and knight g5. And why do you think that we knight g5 is a really difficult move to spot? It's because after rook takes e7, you have to see this move. Bishop e2 doesn't actually work here. And the reason is because they have queen g2. So you have to go bishop h3. And then where does the queen go? Can't go down here anywhere. So it has to go queen e1. And after here, it's mate. So I think what was missed, maybe is this bishop h3 move because I don't think this knight g5 knight f3 tactic, tactic is particularly difficult to spot but I think what was missed is bishop h3 so instead of that after this he played bishop e2 which is what I was pretty much thinking about which is about after knight g5 after and you would think okay after queen g2 then we get bishop takes c4 because if he takes here we take here and then we would take this one right after so maybe that's what he was thinking but here there's a brilliant move and it uses the fact that white is up the exchange. You have the move g4. An absolutely stunningly brilliant move. Cutting the connection between the two pieces. And after takes here, queen g2, white is actually winning here. And yeah, it's very hard to believe that black was just completely destroying the white the whole game. And then, yeah, even 2700 GMs make huge blunders. But instead of that, his opponent played queen f5, which, okay, queen f5 is not really much of a try. Because after knight g5, we're threatening to attack we're threatening the rook and we're also threatening like knight h3 sort of threats and where do you move your rook you don't have anywhere to move the rook it's just trapped so he took here and after knight h3 he loses the queen and he resigned the game so yeah basically that's a really easy setup against the ready what you're going to look for is we're going to go to our caveated position 
uh, not here, sorry. Here, this is the position that we were discussing. The idea is to go castles here, a5 to prevent their counterplay and look for f4 and this sort of fluid attacking setup. So try this out in your own games and you can even try this out as white. I've played this many times. I had this twice over the board and both times I won with the black pieces. So definitely a very good weapon at the amateur level. And also, as you can see here, the super GM use it to beat lower rated players. So if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Try the setup up, set up out. And if you like it, maybe even share with a friend. I'll see you guys in the next one.